Hello, I'm Kevin Parr from Salford in the northwest of England. With some computers, an SD card in one of these SD to IDE adapters can seem to format OK, but then won't boot or won't work reliably. The problem's almost certainly down to the fact that the computer BIOS program hasn't auto detected the card's drive characteristic properly at power up. Unsurprisingly, then, the operating system uses that bad BIOS information when formatting the drive, blissfully unaware that it's creating a drive that can never work properly. The problem can be the same regardless of whether the adapter has a female edge connector, like this one, that plugs directly into the motherboard's connector, or has a male connector, like this one, that connects to a standard IDE ribbon cable. I'll use the adapter that connects to a ribbon cable. Hopefully. Pop the cable into the adapter. Touch the power lead and we're ready to rock and roll. Fortunately there's an easy two-step solution. The first step is to boot from a floppy or from some other medium to run a very clever little program called What IDE. What ID was written by a chap called Tom Warren, who released it as shareware back in 1994, at a time when IDE drives had just become popular. But sometimes, like today's SD cards, didn't have a label showing the drive's correct geometry, in terms of the cylinders, the heads and the tracks. This program, which ignores the BIOS information, interrogates the drive's firmware to get the manufacturer's description of those parameters. OK, let's run what IDE. There we are. In a split second it's retrieved an unequivocal statement of the drive geometry. For the drive to work correctly, the cylinders must be set to 992 with 16 heads and 63 sectors per track. The second step is to reboot and go into the BIOS. I'm pressing delete on this machine, which takes us into the BIOS, where in standard CMOS features, we can see that it's recognized the IDE adapter and called it a memory card adapter. Now we can press enter to get the details. We can see that the 500 megabyte SD card is only showing us 198 megabytes. And that's because the BIOS has misdetected the drive's details as 512 cylinders with 12 heads. It's got the sectors right at 63. And all of these settings are in light blue, which shows that they're not available for alteration. But if we drop down here, and take the drive out of auto detect and put it in manual everything's changed to white which means it's editable so we can pop down change that to 992 with was it 16 yes 16 16 heads and when we press F10 it's now correctly calculated that the, the drive will have 512 meg. Those then are the two steps for solving the problem. For anyone interested in what IDE, there's download information at the end of the video. And there's also a download link in the YouTube text below the video. 
Now it's time to load MS-DOS onto the SD card and to prove that it works well. It seems archaic now, but in the old days we got programmers like What IDE from floppy disks that came sellotaped to the front of computer magazines each month. That's how we got computing news in the pre-internet days and how we got our shareware and freeware goodies along with demonstration programs sometimes for commercial software. The first thing that we'll need to do is to partition the drive. We'll have one big drive C. F-disk. Number one, create a DOS partition. One again to create a primary DOS partition. Do you wish to use the maximum available size and make it active? Yes. The system will now restart. This has always been a pain. We just have to be patient, wait for it to reboot before we can format the drive. I wouldn't like to say how many times what ID saved me bacon from 1994 onwards. It was an absolute lifesaver when dealing with misbehaving old IDE drives. I bet it's been used by techies all over the world. I certainly passed it on at every opportunity to, to my peers. Format drive C slash S let's put the MS-DOS system on it which makes it bootable slash V because I want to specify a volume name Yes, carry on. And this is quite rapid. Well, it will be because there's no moving parts in an SD drive, unlike those old electromechanical IDE drives that were, that were very slow compared with this, but fast at the time. MS-DOS 622, and we'll give it a suffix of SD as a reminder that it's an SD card. Now we can put the software on the hard drive that's just been formatted. Copy DOS That'll put the configuration file and the automatic exec file onto the new hard drive. We'll make a directory called DOS on the on the hard drive. We'll copy the DOS directory from the A drive to the new directory on the C drive. This is a stripped down version of MS-DOS with just the essential programs that, that are needed on a, a floppy. Well, essential in my view, for what I use them for. And after EMM386, there's lots of little utilities that are collected along the way. Especially what IDE, of course. Okay, pop the floppy out. Now we can reboot for the first time from the from the hard drive. Da, 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 da. It was just looking for a floppy disk there, there is none, so it's booting from the hard drive. Wow, that's fast. Blisteringly fast. 
let's just look at a few things yes it's got the version right uh, we'll have a look at memory <laughs> strange to see how little memory MS-DOS can use there's actually two gig in that machine well everything is happening exactly as it should first time round with no hiccups so that proves that the drive's okay end of story I hope that some of these ramblings might be useful to someone somewhere someday and leave you with details of where to get hold of what IDE keep well cheerio